Welcome to my manufacturing review. On the table in front of you is a Prusik made by Sterling Rope. This particular Prusik's model name comes from two details of its construction. One, it's made using an 8mm rope, which is by the way of a sewn construction. You can see the stitching there, as well as that's how the ends of the 8mm rope were joined together there with this black stitching. And the other part of its name comes from the fact that here where it takes a loop, a metal thimble has been fitted into it, so therefore the marketing department named it an 8mm thimble Prusik. That's what you see on this tag, still attached to this product, 8mm thimble Prusik. And throughout this video I'm going to refer to the product as Prusik instead of Prusik, because Mr. Prusik was Austrian, so I'm just going to honor that tradition. This three-letter acronym is also part of the product's name. Rapid Intervention Team is an acronym used in firefighting and rescue work, but the Prusik is marketed not only towards those uses, but also towards arborist work. So, whether you climb trees for a living, or burning buildings, or crevasses and ravines, a Prusik is a device to aid in climbing and descent. So, what's a manufacturing review? In this video I'm going to look at some of the product's features, we'll make some observations and comparisons. The condition of the product for these observations is exactly the same as it was sold to me. The product's never been outside in the field, never been dirtied, uh, never got wet, load has never been placed on it. So any surface conditions that you see on close-ups is a result of not use, but this is how it came out of the factory. Okay. The product, I think in my opinion, is brilliantly thought out and is almost flawlessly manufactured. It's really well suited for hot work, uh, and I'm going to explain how arborist work and rescue work, how that is hot work. And to do that, I'm going to explain that with this short piece of a climbing rope, which I have here. And I'm just going to move the tag over here to the overlapping portion of the Prusik. So a Prusik, or this particular one, is meant to be used on a climbing rope by wrapping it two or three times, depending on how much friction you want out of this device. And uh, this is wrapping it once, and this is twice. And when you wrap it twice, I'll try to pull it somewhat tight and dress it a little bit without ripping off this paper tag from it. So that's how it somewhat looks like when the coils wrap the rope and there is a length on it to wrap it a third time. In that case the thimble is just going to get closer or end up closer to the climbing rope, something like that. You can still attach a carabiner to it. So how this is really well suited for hot work and what arborists have to do with hot work is that many prusiks that are made of nylon or polyester, those materials have a really low melting point, somewhere around 200 degrees Celsius, and I'm just really generalizing because there are many types of nylon and many types of polyester as well, we'll just go with 200 degrees Celsius, but more importantly, uh, the, these man-made fibers, nylon and polyester, have a glass transition temperature point at which point these materials or any materials lose much of their strength and much of their load bearing capability is the point where they begin to soften and go mushy. So they're still solid, it's a solid to solid transition point but they go mushy and they lose much of their load bearing capability. This Prusik was made with Twaron. Twaron fiber has excellent heat resistance and excellent abrasion resistance, making it really well suited for hot work. So I'm going to explain how arborist work is hot work. So never mind the fire burning overhead on a, in a burning building for firefighting, but when you rescue somebody and descend down on a rope, whether in a rush, as in a rescue, leaving a burning building, or in a rescue you don't have a choice, you have to go down fast on a rope, or in some cases, in arborist work, significant amount of heat is generated in the coils of this Prusik. 
this heat needs to be dissipated and torn fiber is brilliant in that. The inside of this Prusik is nylon strands that run the length of the product, but this crisscross pattern that you see in the jacketing or sheath is this is what Tworon is and it's quite thick. I don't know if it's about 50% of the product. It kind of feels like 50% core and 50% sheath or maybe 40% sheath, something like that. It's uh, I can feel it, but it's really difficult to film it. So, Tworon fiber, maybe you haven't heard of Tworon fiber, but belongs to the same chemical family. It's a para-aramid. It's the same chemical family as Kevlar. Now, Tworon is made by the competition Tejin, and Kevlar is made by DuPont. If you hear the word Kevlar, probably you associate it with bulletproof vests, yes. But beyond that, they also have all paraaramids or both of these, both Tworon and Kevlar have brilliant, excellent heat resistance and abrasion resistance. So that's what made it a really good material for the sheath or the jacketing for this Prusik that Sterling Rope chose. Really well thought out. And that's also how this heat that affects ordinary nylon and polyester prusiks on descent in either arborist work or rescue work or leaving a burning building is, is an issue for uh, those materials. Not so much for this one. Of course it can also be destroyed so uh, nothing lasts forever and nothing is unlimited but this one will stay safer for longer. I hope that makes sense. Another feature that I really appreciate that uh, Sterling went the length in uh, producing this Prusik this way is that they have a tag here with important information on it and it's uh, shrink wrapped with this clear plastic uh, sleeve on it. So what's here, if a safety guy comes along they can see right away that this product meets at least some safety standards somewhere, namely the American uh, safety standards here, NCZ 133.1 or 0.1, and this is the manufacturer's logo, 8 mm is the diameter of the rope, 13 inches is the length of the product, and what's really, what I really appreciate is this lot number on it. Now it's not the same as, a, as an identifier, or an, an individual identifier for the product, but it's a good information on it. Should this product uh, fail here and this part be destroyed in it, this lot number repeats over here on this tag. So if this is filed away with the safety people or with the management of the company and in a logbook and this is traced uh, to whom this particular Prusik is assigned to, it can be, uh, you know, uh, part of the investigation and, and can be traced back to the point of manufacture to investigate whether there is a cause for material failure or, or the accident that this might have caused uh, happened otherwise. So this lot number is really good. And just so the third, my third favorite information here is just so there is absolutely no doubt about the load-bearing capability of this product, it's clearly printed here that its safe work load is 541 pounds. Safe work load it means that this is a st static, nice and even loading on both legs of the product. 541 pounds all day long, 24-7. No failure. The uh, minimum breaking strength of the product is 10 times higher than that of the safe workload so the safety factor of 10 results uh, in or means that the minimum breaking strength is 5418 pounds and your safety margin is this 10 times safety factor to allow for asymmetrical loading where one leg carries all the load and the other is doing nothing or shock loading the system as it is expected to do so in an emergency when you leave a building in a rush or when the product arrests a fall. So that's your safety margin. This is really good important information to know. So those are brilliant bits and one more really good bit that I like is the fact that it comes with a thimble. You can clip into it and this thimble extends the life of the product because 
the carabiner tends to wear out one spot on the Prusik and uh, if it wears out at one spot the whole product is garbage so uh, this thimble prevents that. So how is this manufactured almost flawlessly? Let me show you and this is an issue with the thimble and it needs a little bit of close-up and a little bit of patience. This thimble was made out of a slice of a pipe. You can kind of see this was the inside of the pipe and they cut off a slice about this long. The edges of the slice were folded up and this thimble was cold formed. This way it was also elongated and deformed. Uh, this angular uh, shape that they ended up with is not an issue. This seats a carabiner rather well. It's not a problem. It's, it's not a weakness, whatever because this thimble's function is to protect the rope and it does it well. Also, like I mentioned, this has never been outside and never been dropped. If you drop the product and it slides a little bit, instead of falling on a sharp rock or when you step on it with your boot, it's, this uh, thimble here is protecting instead of the fiber in this really valuable torn jacketing instead of this being torn and uh, unraveling this thimble protects it so what is a light issue is that this edge is left sharp it's not sharp enough to cut your skin you should be wearing long sleeves and the gloves for arborist work but you know when you're jumping out of a burning building or in rescue work that may not be an option available to you at all times to come with neatly trimmed nails and etc so this edge here is just coarse it's really not cutting my hand and it's a result of a burr that's all around the product on both sides on the thimble on yeah, on this thimble only. So I can feel it, but it's it's a minor, minor imperfection, and it's really easy, I think, to improve upon with a little bit of uh, thought f in terms of manufacturing from sterling rope. You can see if I can get a nice close up, and I'm gonna have to experiment with this a little bit. There, that the you can see there's a dot or a bump or a ridge on it it's it's catching my nail there and this burr is highest to the outside here and is tapering out and lowest to the inside or to the eye of this loop I hope that makes sense I'm just experimenting with the light there you can see the burr right there in the middle of the picture with this light that is tapering towards the inside it's not huge it's not much and what am I gonna do about it? I think I'm just gonna file it flat with a small micro file. Keeping in mind that uh, if the metal particles that are removed from here from the edge to make the edge smoother and more rounded, if those metal particles get embedded in the rope that's detrimental to the rope it, because this thimble moves a little bit so it's going to be moving inside and into the uh, embedded in the torn fibers and it's going to sever those fibers and the fibers are going to fray and stick out so that's not productive either but while it's being filed i'm not going to do it here and now but as it is being filed if those particles are either suctioned away or blown away with compressed air with a jet of air then uh, they're not going to be embedded in the fiber so it needs a little bit of thought and setup on my part and i'm just going to try to get you some other sections on it with this surface imperfection here is this dent or chip toward my thumb there if i can there you can kind of see the light breaking on it it's again it's never been dropped but you know still the value of this thimble it still protects the rope really well and you're likely to get this is mild steel you're likely to get chips in or or this these small dents in this metal thimble in use as as this product there's there's that little dent there as this product gets put down on a rock and somebody steps on it and whatever inevitable so uh, these little imperfections can be filed out from it with a little 
with a little thought and and TLC so it's definitely not a deal breaker and I'm really much looking forward to using this product let me just maybe flip it around see if I can get better pictures or different pictures on this burr you can kinda see it along the outside edge tapering to a thickness of nothing towards the inside it's it's hard to see is really difficult to film easier to feel it with your finger there everywhere so just for contrast it's possible to make metal products differently instead of cold forming it this way which also leaves the you can see the edge here is slightly higher here than here on the inside towards the rope it's not a problem but this is where the at the high edge is where this burr folded over burr is generated so just for contrast for surface finishes here is Petzl's AMD impeccable also never been used and no issues whatsoever there's a, probably an individual tracing number there etched into it brilliant fit and finish needs nothing perfectly formed uh, surface everywhere on it and and for an item of similar size here is a really small accessory carabiner from DMM I really like the Welsh guys and there is the how does this logo read there DMM there sorry about that and if I look at the close-ups look at the look at the rivet head flawless on one side and perfect on the other the, so it is possible to manufacture many of these accessory carabiners are really trashy but this one look at that flawless key nose fitting on the carabiners end and also on the gate I can tell you that this is this is not sharp this is really well machined and and it's forged in a die and it's really top of the line fit and finish on this one from the competition so it's possible to make small metal items flawless and not leave them sharp so that's where sterling rope can pick up the pace a little bit but like I said I'm really much looking forward to using this product after a little bit of surface improvement thank you for watching